Hey, this is Jared Medulla, and this is another great episode of ETX Rock featuring Snake River Red. From the unknown to the stars, from the couch to the car, from the unheralded and the unheard, to the legends and beyond, it's where we all belong. Yes, this is where it all starts. From every genre, from every plane, this is where the music's played. So tune right in, won't you bring a friend? This is where it all begins. Welcome to the show, let the music flow of every style and creed. And you can bet your socks that ETX rocks, ETX rocks. Hey guys, Boston Chris here again, and you are tuned in to the number one resource for independent music here in Northeast Texas. It's episode 281 of the ETX Rock Show, and we have a huge treat for you guys today. We have Paul and Lawson here from Snake River Red from College Station, and um, Spending some time with us here in the ETX Rocks living room. Now, you guys have had quite a weekend just driving all over the place, and now you're in East Texas. Probably your first time here in Eastern Texas, right? Yes, sir. So, what do you think of all the trees? They're everywhere. <laughs> Looks like that trip to Florida. Yeah. So, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, they have a different kind of tree in Florida, though. I think it's like palm trees. This is pine trees. Yeah, though, that trip down I 10, it's all nothing but. But uh, pine trees for That's a long true. time. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're called the Piney Woods for a reason. Right. For sure. Um, but anyway, Snake River Red is here for the first time on the ETX Rock Show, and they're going to perform a couple of songs for y'all out there as well. The first one is uh, just burning up the charts right now. It's called Damn o Oklahoma, right? So tell us a little how this song got to be written, the story behind it. Um, me and a buddy of mine, we write together, and uh, I had that that line in my head damn Oklahoma for a while didn't know what it was going to be about didn't know what you know what it was about and then I kind of started writing some hearing a melody and singing it and uh all I got was chorus and I could not for the life of me get anything for the verses and uh I gave it to my buddy Rustin Clayhorn and uh he knocked out the verses in one day sent me the song back down wow. and I was like man that was awesome He's a, awesome. You need to check him out. Russell Clayhorn is from uh, Smithville, Texas. I He's definitely will. Really, really good. Yeah, yeah. So co-writes can be beneficial sometimes. Yeah. Because I mean, you can be stuck on a song forever, and I, I mean, I've heard this before, where either a chorus or a verse or something like that will stick in a songwriter's mind, but there's no progression to the next step in the song until you bring somebody else into it. So yeah, that's really cool. The song is, uh, I think, number seventy-one this week on the Something charts. Something in the seventies. Yeah, I haven't checked it. We've we've been busy this week. Yeah, very busy. Oh my god! Hopefully, we can get them to describe what their road trips have been like this weekend. <laughs> Just this weekend. Um, if you're watching from outside the area, you know we talk about the state of Texas all the time. Um, I think if Texas was in Europe, it'd be like the third largest country in Europe. <laughs> Something like that behind Russia and France. Or, nope, bigger than France, Poland probably. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, if you're watching in Europe or Africa or somewhere like that, uh, Texas is huge. And these guys are from the College Station area, which is like central Texas. We're northeast Texas. So I think you guys had like a four-hour drive, four-and-a-half-hour drive this mm -hmm. morning just to be with us here today. So definitely want to thank you guys for the time and effort to spend some time with us. We're excited to show you guys the song Damn Oklahoma, the current single from Snake River Red. Y'all check it out live here in the ETX Rocks living room. Troubles and 
We are back once again that was damn oklahoma by snake river red and that song is climbing the charts right now so i know the best way you guys out there can help these guys out is by calling your local radio station get damn oklahoma played on the radio even your internet radio stations call them um even if they are like in say um, name a place manila philippines they have terrestrial radio there they'll play snake river red you guys could be huge in, uh, in the islands. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys heard that before? Like you, someone spinning your song in some faraway place? No, I've heard I'm big in Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I think we're all big in Japan right. if we actually ever got to go to Japan. <laughs> um, so I know there's been some kind, you know, some evolution with the band uh, fairly recently. I know you guys are all have full-time jobs. Uh, Lawson's in college, so I guess full-time job doesn't count for you, but <laughs> college is a full-time job. Um, but you guys originally had a different singer. I think the band's been in existence since 2017, is that right? Yes. Yeah, we had a, our first singer's name was Chase Kimmy, and uh, our town, where we're from, is Oilfield. Yeah. Oilfield, and he got a Oilfield job out in West Texas, and he got to take it, so he took it, and we took a little time off, and a mutual friend introduced us to Lawson, and we did one practice, and we just went from there. I mean, that was it. And he was on the first single, right? She's Crazy? Yes. And, I mean, this song, the debut single, I think almost got into the top 50 for yes. y'all. Just unbelievable yeah. stuff. You guys had to be stoked. Yeah, we were very excited about that one. Very pleased for not knowing anybody, not do it, not knowing anything about radio, anything right. like that, and it, it got played and it was for like 25 weeks yeah it's still i think we reached out to you guys fairly soon after that i, I think it was december or january where we mm -hmm. set this up and 
Um, man, I was a huge fan of that song. I really enjoyed She's Crazy. I love Damn Oklahoma, too. They're completely different kind of songs. And I think maybe that's because of the new singer on the song. Right. So how did you meet these guys, Austin? So like Paul said, we uh, basically met through a uh, mutual friend on Facebook. Someone tagged me in a post because Paul posted uh, that they were needing a lead singer if anyone knew of anybody. And so I messaged them, and then, like I say, we practiced one time, and then I think after that practice for the next probably 15, 16 weeks, we played every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night somewhere. <laughs> wow. We were so, busy. Oh, yeah. So it didn't have much rehearsal time. Just kind of Amarillo, threw you right into the fire. Amarillo, About three weeks of San rehearsal. Antone. Yeah, we were in Amarillo, San Antonio, San Angelo, mm-hmm. uh, Corpus, Wow, Victoria. So you guys are all over the place. I see y'all's posters, and I'm like, damn, man, these boys are getting around. Trying to. So how's, what's that like, trying to get through college and this busy touring schedule as well? Uh, man, it just depends on how you make it. You know, like my classes usually I'll set them up to where it's only like Monday, Wednesday, or only Tuesday and Thursday. That way I can have that time, you know. Yeah. But like say, if you're going to make it through college, you got to have the time, like take the time to do your work too. So so is this your first band? Uh. So, I've been in several bands since I was little. I've been playing guitar since I was three. And so, I uh, played lead for my uncle's band. He had the Cody Robbins band for a while. And uh, I played lead with them a little bit from the time I was probably like 11 to I was like wow. 13. And then... uh you play lead guitar in a band at 11? Yeah, so, and then I started opening for them, playing just acoustic stuff. And then uh, I made my own band when I was 17 back home with my grandpa. He played steel for us, and uh, a couple of our good friends played bass and drums, and uh, we were starting to pick up in Fort Worth, and then I decided I needed to move down for school, and so yeah. dropped everything and then just moved down. So, I mean, you come into this project, it's a you know a pretty established group already. Mm-hmm. They've had success with a single and all that. How hard is it for you to learn their material, both both as a, as a vocalist and a guitarist? Uh, wasn't too hard, honestly. I mean, like I say, it's just how much time you put into it. Yeah. Really, you know, you can make it hard or you can make it easy. And we also went with like we have like a different sound now too, especially because yeah. he plays electric guitar a lot for like ninety percent of the time. So we went from a little bit more country ish kind of to a little bit more. You know, Texas red country dirt. rock, red yeah. dirt, and uh, it lo- I, we love it. It just makes the live shows mm-hmm. even better. Just yeah, just just having a that could make for a quick evolution process, though. Right, you know? <laughs> being forced to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, are you following his lead a lot of the time when it comes to influences? Because I mean, obviously, he has changed the dynamic of the band in in your mind for the better. Yeah. So how do the rest of the guys kind of follow along with that? Well. Out of this, I guess. Well, we go with it. We got, I mean, we're, we got the shows booked. We got to play it. So <laughs> he's throwing songs out there. Like, I mean, he also introduces to a lot of new people, too. Like, um, some people that, some Texas country guys that were out of the call station area, Fort Worth area, that we hadn't heard too much, but he's showing us these songs. Like, dang, that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. So, and we'll you guys play. don't play too much cover material either. It's a lot of originals, right? Originals, but we, we to get bookings, a lot of places there. Yeah. Like, we need to play two and a half hours, three hours. You just hours, gotta whatever. entertain. You just know. gotta, yeah, you gotta keep people dancing, and we 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 do all that. We've we, we you know we play around. If we play an hour and a half, we're gonna do a lot of originals, something like that. But you know, to get in some places, you gotta do right. Covers, yeah. And so, uh, how are you guys picking covers for for the show? Is it, does it depend on the so venue? basically? I think we all kind of know probably a collection of two hundred songs. I'd say, and so. Basically, depending on how the crowd, if the crowd's sitting down and it's an older crowd, I mean, play something like Neon Moon or Don't Close Your Eyes, you know, they're going to get up and dance to it. Mm. But if it's a newer crowd, then I'll just rowdy. haul her back. Get a little know? rowdy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Turn just go by the crowd. Back. So we don't do the same. We've never done the same set twice, ever. Ever. Wow. We Yeah, I was reading that about y'all, uh, I think on Reverb Nation or somewhere like that, where... Hey, you guys never never play the same show every time. Mm-hmm. So that I mean, basically, the way you perform is based on your audience, based on feelings or exactly. connectability mm-hmm. or whatever you're feeling at the time. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Do you pick uh, from your originals the same way? Yeah. Well, we we probably just 
speak our originals yeah we in just there. throw yeah. them in every now and then yeah. Yeah. people yeah. are up dancing really moving a lot we'll throw one in that way they keep dancing now do you tell yeah. folks it's an original oh yeah yeah because i know a lot of bands will try to even sneak it in there you know like so y'all check out this song you know and then people will be like Man, oh yeah never i've heard, heard of a couple one. people saying uh need to, need to try that. this is one of uh george Strait's new songs y'all go check it out <laughs> and then after it's you play right as rain exactly <laughs> <laughs> and then after that they'll go uh come ask you about it you know and then you tell them it's your original and then kind of shock you just tell them it's on george's unreleased box exactly. set <laughs> from, the, from the 50s <laughs> it doesn't exist <laughs> So uh, what, what's the plan for you guys? You know, you have the new the new group. Uh, you have some success on the charts. People know who you are now. So I, I know you have a record out, which is incredible, by the way. I've been listening to it all week. Thank so you. what's the next next step for y'all? Studio time. Again, get back in the studio here in the next month or two. Um, we're going to release another single by the end of the year. Uh, probably be a little bit more than a little more than a memory. Cool. And that'll buy us a little time to record the album, do the music video, do all the promotional stuff, take new pics. I mean, you know, it's just time yeah. consuming and money consuming. Right. And, but uh, that is the next thing. We're going to do a probably a whole 10 song album next. Uh, excited songs I wrote, Lawson wrote. And other than the together. single, this will be the first material with him and, with, on vocals, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun for y'all. Are you guys going to play your own instruments and stuff yes. like that in the studio? Yes, that's what we did on the last album. That's what we're doing on this one, too. That's that cool. last one, the, uh, we went to just one, two studio record that. Yeah, record that track. Yeah, yeah the uh, the last one, we were going to just take the vocals out uh, of the last singer and put his in there, and we get there and the uh, file's corrupted. Uh-huh. So me and Lawson knocked out the entire song from beginning to end, from scratch in eight hours. Yeah, we brought in fiddle player and, and a drummer, drummer, and that was and it. We did the we did it from beginning to end. Did the whole song. So. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. So, um, what advantages do you feel there are in using your your own band members as the studio musicians as well? Practice, um, knowing little nuances, little accents that maybe they won't hear if they're hearing the song for the first time. Right. But if we've played it. 45 times I'm like man it'll sound cool if you did that and we already kind of know what we're doing plus our drummer Garrett Durnberger is oh, wow. solid yeah. he is he is amazing drummer always on time always never rushes never slows down he knows I mean he's solid and, do you feel uh, like it gives you an advantage in live shows too and sounding like the record yes because I mean if you're using the same musicians in the studio as you are on stage there can't be a whole lot of difference between the sound. Right. Because I, I, I see that a lot in records where I'll listen to it and I know that it's not the band playing the drums or the steel or whatever pieces are in there. And there's different vibes and different influences in different musicians. Right. Um, so a lot of times, you know, if you're trying to sell a product to your fans at a show, it doesn't sound like what they heard at the show. And you can start with, you get some, like, Ashley Simpson stuff going mm-hmm. on with that. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's no good. So introduce the, the guys that aren't here and couldn't make the trip today. Okay, there's Garrett Durnberger, who's our drummer. He's from Giddings, Texas. We're same my hometown, too. We actually grew up together two blocks down. We were the first people we ever played music together was me and him. Wow. When we were 12 years old. I had a guitar, he had a drum set, and we started playing. And, um... And then Ben Gonzalez is from Victoria, Texas. He's the lead player, and whenever our original uh, lineup for the band, our singers played acoustic, and Ben played all the lead. And so now I have two lead players. We got Lawson and Ben, so they swap off in different songs. They play different leads and stuff like that. And, and dual leads is awesome anyway. I mean, awesome. Let's be honest. Uh, usually you only hear that in rock or metal and stuff like that you don't see it too often in country music so it's really cool to see that it's awesome to see a front man playing lead that is awesome as hell man um that's just all you've known though i mean 11 years old you're playing lead guitar in a band yeah sure that's crazy man i love it dude. and what are you 21 now 21 so now you can drink <laughs> you, you can drink over the table you don't have to hide under it anymore, right exactly <laughs> So, I mean, what's the plan for you? Uh, you know, obviously, you're, you're still going to school. So, so. I want to finish school. I'm going to go to Texas State this coming semester, and I want to uh, finish school and then get out and just start hitting the road. Yeah. As hard as I can hit it. 
So obviously, I'm, I'm assuming you guys have dreams outside the state of Texas trying oh, to for sure. go national. As big as you can go. Yeah. Hard work. I know exactly. you guys are down for that because you're here in northeast Texas on a Sunday afternoon. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so Snake River Red, where'd the name come from? Um, Evil Knievel did that jump over the Snake River a long time ago oh, and uh, in the 70s, 60s or whatever. And uh, on the show Jackass, they had, they did this, they jumped over this ditch and had the red, white, and blue and everything. And that's, that skit was called Snake River Redemption. And I was like, that's a cool band name. And I liked it. And um, I liked it a lot. And then we started out with that one. And then as, like, the second we started out, uh, we get a message from some band in Canada with that name. Wow. And so uh, they're like metal band. And so we just, well, I asked the guys, do y'all just want to go to Snake River or Snake River Red? And uh, the guys were a big fan of the three-word name. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Three-word three, three word names. And uh, they're like, no, nah, just shut it. Just cut it to red. And. So we went from there. It's very searchable too. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, we cool. actually we were playing a show in San Angelo, and the poster had the, the metal heavy band. metal band on there. And we were like, <laughs> "That is not us." <laughs> that was definitely. Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, funny. y'all probably made some new fans that night that were expecting. Oh like, yeah, uh, there's different crowd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, like pointy hair. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's probably uh, a letdown for some of those folks. I imagine expecting metal and getting red dirt. <laughs> could be worse. Yeah. Could be the other way around. Right. Exactly. Uh, expecting red dirt and getting metal. That's a culture <laughs> shock. Um, yeah, I can't believe they would actually message you. Yeah, they just let us know. They said, we've been around since 2014 or 2015 and this and that. And I was like, oh, okay, well. It's like, dude, you're in Canada, man. Right. You play metal. Right. I don't know. Could have, like, renamed it Snake River Redemption Country or <laughs> something like that. I don't know. But, yeah, I think that's a cool band name did you come up with that yeah oh for since i seen that well, i was like i want to have a band with that name in it <laughs> <laughs> very cool and obviously this is not your first band you've Nothing. been playing forever yeah so lots of projects you have you always strictly been country i have a feeling not no like whenever the uh whenever we went in the first time to start recording um I had a buddy of mine come start uh, on drums. It was Miles Stone from Cody Johnson Band. He okay. he lives in the Austin area, and he's a buddy of mine. He came and did the drums on it, and he's so good that I was like, man, I want big drums. I want that stuff. So when we started the project, it was a little bit more rock and roll, and then I took a break for a while from music, and then whenever we started getting back in there, that's with my new guys, and we finished up the album. So it started a little bit more rock and roll, then it uh, ended a little bit more country or yeah. And now we're going back more rock. <laughs> yeah. awesome. and, and you say, you know, we hear this all the time. I left music and then I came back. Always pulls you back, doesn't it? Right, always. And especially for songwriters. And, and you know, you are a songwriter. You've written most of the songs on, on the album, I think, mm-hmm. right? Um, as a songwriter, uh, what, what is your biggest... Uh, uh, what's, what's the question? What, what's your biggest goal when you're writing a song? I can't sing very well. So if I'm going to write a song, it has to be catchy for me singing it. So I know if somebody who has a good voice sings it, it's going to be really catchy. And then um, the lyrics have to, they have to not be perfect, but they got to be, I, I can't have nothing that stands out to where it, like I hear it and I'm like, ooh, I didn't like that. Yeah. So I'll go, like I'll write a song and then I'll go back and I'll, like I say, polish it up. I'll go back and I'm like, oh, I can use a different word here that I like more or a different phrase and I'll smooth it out. And and uh, that's kind of how I always always do those. And so you're singing a lot of his songs. I know you're writing songs as well. I mean, playing lead guitar at 11, you're probably writing songs. <laughs> yes, sir. So how, how do your songs come into this project and how easy is it for you to connect to another person's songs as well? Well, like I say, is like they've been playing together for so long that it's been pretty easy to just blend everything together, you know, kind of just run, like throw ideas. We can throw ideas everywhere, you know, like, hey, let's play this song, play this song, or play my original, play your original, and then everyone just kind of learns it, and then we come together, practice it once. and then. Do you feel like there's a lot of compromise from both sides? You know, you yeah, have three guys over sure. here, you have a one yeah. singer over here. You know, obviously his... his uh, you know, influence is going to be on your songs, and then y'all's influence is going to be on his songs that he yeah. brings to the table. So there has to be some give or take there right. in order for both sides to be happy with the end product. Right. Do you guys argue at all? 
<laughs> no, not too much, really. Not, not I, too I don't much. think really there's much of a choice. He's the youngin, right? Right. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're, all, we're the old guys. <laughs> we're the, the youngin. Yeah. No, he, he can't argue. You're just going to have to deal with <laughs> it. He's got to take it and go. What's that like, man? I mean, these guys have all been Oh, playing. he doesn't bother me. We're all pretty cool with each yeah. other. Yeah. Do they give you crap about it? Never, really. Like, we, re- we really don't. Why are me. you shaving, Lawson? I mean, there's no point. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> no, I mean, he had a stash. Oh, I had a dirty stash <laughs> weeks ago. He had a stash, just a stash, nothing else for a while. Oh, God, I loved it. He, had, he grew the rest yeah, of it. It was, it was awesome. It was wild. Is there pictures of this? Oh, I'm sure somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Someone's got them. So you're, you're the front man of a pretty well successful band what what's your goal as a front man as a lead vocalist at a at a show uh, what what's your mindset to entertain the group just like you said entertain that's the goal make everyone happy you know you want to uh every time you want people to come back that's the thing you want them to come see you again they they you don't want them to think it's just going to be the same next time you know and not show up to the next one that's like cody johnson you can go to a hundred of his shows and you're still going to go to the yeah, the hundred and first show, you right? Know? So, and yeah, that's a good question too. I mean, are you, you know, are, are you watching your peers that are good entertainers and, and kind oh, of yeah. implementing some of their? A lot strategies? of my friends <clears throat> will laugh at me when I go to concerts and stuff because I won't talk, I won't jam out to anything. I will literally just sit there and watch. Take your mental notes. Exactly, and I, I can't do like, I don't know what it is. I can go to a, a humongous concert with thousands of people and not even be partying like the rest of them are because I'm just like studying, you know. When did that change for you? Man, I really, I don't even remember. Yeah. I don't, I have no idea. So you've never really enjoyed a concert like the rest of us do? <laughs> I, I don't know why I can't. Maybe one day I'll just be able to just relax, but until I get to where I want to be, I don't You probably have really your own know. valet service by that point. I hope so. People bringing you margaritas. <laughs> so we're sitting here with Snake River Red, at least half of them anyway. And uh, it's Paul and Lawson from Snake River Red, all the way from College Station. Now, I understand that there's going to be some moving happening. Are you going from Victoria to San Marcos so or something like I, that? Uh, like I said earlier, I originally lived in Decatur, which is up by Fort Worth. Then I moved to uh, College Station to go to school. Now I lived in Victoria for two weeks because I moved out of my house in College Station. And now this coming Wednesday, I'm moving into... Uh, apartment in San Marcos. So. so, how does geography factor into the it, band? It's the same distance from from, from Victoria. The, it, it, it's all of them are all the, like like the town where we practice and all that. It's called Giddings, and it's a little town in the middle of nowhere. And it's an hour an hour from College Station, hour from San Marcos, hour and a half from Victoria. It's right in the middle. So it's the wow. same distance. For all of us, anyway. So basically, he's just like yes, going around. He's yeah. surrounding <laughs> getting yeah. is what it is. So is there like another town? That's I'm probably next? gonna move to Houston next. Just to, it's an hour. Uh, it's I'm an hour fifteen saying. from getting to. <laughs> We're right in the middle of all of it. So you're hearing it here first. Lawson's coming to Houston. Lock up your <laughs> liquor cabinets. He just turned twenty-one. <laughs> uh, so when do you graduate? Uh, man, I'm not sure yet. Whenever they tell me, I'm done. <laughs> no, but well, you just show up, right? Probably about. And probably another year and a half. That's cool. Or so, so I'm not too far away. I figured I already started. I might as well finish. Yeah. So. And I mean, things can change. You know, exactly. that can that can put the brakes on stuff like that. You know. Mm-hmm. And so it, it you definitely have my respect that you're keeping it going. Um, I know the the new single is doing really well. It's 71. I think it'll probably move up about to the same place that your first one did. I imagine. Um, yeah, I'll probably do faster because the other one was at in the top 60 like 25 30 weeks into it yeah. like it took a while for it to start moving up this one's already was in the first eight weeks and this is a great song too I mean damn Oklahoma it's a perfect summer song uh, you know it's kind of like you get into the summertime and you get all these party songs and all of that and you know I'm that guy that needs some relevance so it's <laughs> nice to hear a good heartbreak song on the radio in the summertime just to make you wise up, be like, hey, you better treat your woman good, damn Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> and the second song you guys are going to hear from them is the complete 180 of that because it's about real love and all of that. So tell us about Heaven Sent that you're going to play for, for our audience. So, uh, honest truth, 
so this song I wrote, uh, I had started off a line just uh, out of nowhere. It just hit me one day after I was coming back from class in College Station. And uh, it was just the title, Heaven Sent. That's what I started off with. And really, you know, sometimes you get songs that there's a lot of feeling into you and then sometimes you get songs that you just write and then turn out to be songs that a lot of people feel like thank you put a lot of feeling into yeah. you know? and that ended up being one of those so you know but honestly like I put this one out as a personal single recently on Spotify just to throw it out there and uh, I've had a lot of people come back and tell me like hey this is like something I can relate to you know and so as long as it's something that people can relate to they're going to listen to it you know I yeah because like, love's always going to be a thing exactly. man so it's always relatable in that context exactly. love found love lost all of that is always going to be relevant to people um, it's always going to be radio ready I, I hate when people say that song's not radio ready you know or change the lyrics to this or whatever man I, that drives me nuts you know you when you wrote the song, that's what you were feeling. And if that's how you connect to your audience, and I think that's the best way for the audience to connect to you. Mm -hmm. And if you change things up like they like to do in Nashville, <laughs> then <laughs> things can fall short, I think. How, how do you guys feel about that? Just traditional country, because now traditional country is Americana, right? So, I mean, basically, Willie right. Nelson in the 21st century is an Americana mm -hmm. artist. That hurts me. <laughs> So, I mean, do you think, like, pop country should just be called pop music, or... Like, yeah, there needs to be a division over there. Yeah. Um, there really needs... That's what I've said for the last couple of years, that whatever bro country or, or, or stadium country or anthem country, whatever they call Contemporary, it... Contemporary. Yeah, they need to just place it into two different ones, yeah. but stuff that is more traditional, and then that bro country stuff on a different one, and everybody should be happy. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's... And it, Texas proves that you can do it. Right. Because, I mean, you sit here in the state of Texas and you listen to the radio. If they're playing Texas artists, mm -hmm. you're going to hear some pop country. You're going to hear some red dirt. You're going to hear some honky-tonk, some traditional, some yeah. southern rock influence, some Eric Americana. I mean, it's all here. But we call it what it is in Texas. You know, we don't beat around the bush. At least that's my feeling when it comes to music. Also, I see it's like every 10 to 15 years, pop country comes up something in pop wise comes up yep and then a traditional sound comes back for yep. 10 years and then it kind of creeps back kind of crazy like that and it, it has done it since the 70s yeah it has done it since the 70s and uh it's it seems to me like thankfully like that bro country stuff is kind of on the down slope yeah i and, think so uh, and uh, i think some of the people that are leading the charge the stapletons the simpsons the isbells all those guys are you know, they're proving, oh man, Jamie Johnson and Cody and, you know, all those guys that are just plugging the road with traditional sound and country music, showing the machine that there's an audience for that still, you know. And I, I mean, I love what you guys are doing. You're keeping it traditional, but you also have all these other vibes coming in, Southern Rock, some classic rock, some Red Dirt, all of that stuff. And it's obvious you guys all come from different backgrounds and blends together so well. I mean, we have a bass player playing rhythm here today, which was awesome. He's a songwriter. How are you a songwriter and a bass player? That is... <laughs> well, I was a bass player first. Really? Yeah, like, well, I mean, I played guitar first. It's the first thing I did. And then whenever I was in my first band, um, our lead player quit. Our bass player jumped to playing lead, and they handed me the bass and said, learn it, you have a month. Wow. So I learned it in a month. They said gave you a month, man. Right. You but gave I mean, him three it, weeks. Yeah. But it, <laughs> it, it wasn't it wasn't that big of a stretch from from playing a guitar to bass. I just yeah. learned it real quick, and and I just gotten better over the years doing it. But um, so and then that was I guess I was about twenty, yeah, around nineteen twenty at that time, and then um, I just started writing, trying to write, and it took me forever. I locked myself in a room with a pen and pad, and my guitar, and I knocked out a song like eight hours wow. all night by myself and I wrote a song and it wasn't good at all and I've just been trying to get a better one better one if I have an idea or something I'll write it down on my phone and then go back later and see if I can come up with something but yeah well I mean the album's fantastic man um, I love the songs on it every song is lyrically relevant um, very very 
Uh, are you writing from experience mostly? Most, yeah. Yeah, a lot I, I can feel that from the songs. And uh, guys, don't I didn't forget about Heaven Sent. Um, so we are going to play Heaven Sent um, from Snake River Red. It's completely unplugged here in the ETX Rocks living room. Y'all check it out. Once again, it's Heaven Sent by Snake River Red. back once again it's episode 281 of the etx rock show featuring snake river red for the very first time on the show you guys were just listening to heaven sent now if folks are tuning in hearing about y'all for the first time where would you send them to follow along with y'all on social media and stuff like that uh facebook okay backslash snake of red they can search snake of red instagram, instagram spotify, spotify iTunes. itunes all of it we're, we're on all of it and it's Snake River Red. Snake everywhere. River Red. So everywhere. just at Snake River Red. Yep. Tinder. Yes. Bubble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just don't put emption yeah. on the end of it because those guys suck. <laughs> they <don't> suck. <laughs> <laughs> Man, those Canadians. They seem like they're very nice guys because they're Canadian. 
they were very nice in their in their message. <laughs> Just the fact they sent a message, man. Don't worry, I'm pulling all that out. <laughs> so it's at Snake River Red everywhere. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, MySpace. Tinder, Bumble, Farmers Only. <laughs> Did you see the Austin? He was like, MySpace? What is that? Did, Did you, you ever me? have a MySpace profile? No, my no. Mom I was like, you're one. too young. Yeah. My mom would. <laughs> my mom had one. <laughs> no, she wouldn't His let. No, <laughs> let him have a MySpace. <laughs> it wrecked him for life. He and he did say E Harmony. I don't think there was a Snake River right on there though. <laughs> e Harmony, maybe. I can't remember if we made one. Or not. <laughs> Farmers only for sure. <laughs> Big red tractor. Oh yeah. man. Follow them everywhere, you guys. And then make sure you're requesting the brand new single, Damn Oklahoma, from these guys at all your local radio stations. No matter where you live, even if you live in Helsinki, which I think is in Finland. Maybe. Um, don't kill me if you're Finnish. <laughs> Are you finished? You got it, didn't you? <laughs> Lawson's there with me, man. He's not even a drummer. <laughs> Boom. All right, so once again, make sure you follow these guys. It's at Snake River Red everywhere. They're on Spotify. They're on YouTube. Make sure you're requesting the new single, Damn Oklahoma. I think it's in 71, somewhere in there right now. Let's try to get that up to top 50. Um, I know She's Crazy kind of went like 58, somewhere in there. Um, so call, call, call. That's the best way you guys can help these guys. Also, stream the singles on Spotify. That's another thing that can really help these guys out. And hit that follow button on Spotify as well. Everybody looks at those numbers from venues to radio stations to labels. It's unfortunate, but it's the way the 21st century is. So make sure you're following everything these guys got going on everywhere. It's completely free to do that. Um, just make sure you're hitting the buttons once, though, because like if you hit the like button twice, it does no good. <laughs> you know, does nothing. Did you know that? So what we do with our channel is like somebody hits subscribe twice, we charge them twenty bucks. <laughs> really? Yeah, not really. I, there's no way to do that. <laughs> Why would you think that you could do that? I don't know, man. You it's like if I hit it once, no charge. Hit it twice, ding, ding, ding. What's that noise? <laughs> and we just reach into their bank account and pull out fifteen bucks in pesos, <laughs> which is like three ninety nine American. <laughs> I don't even know if it is or not. <laughs> Who knows? It's better than yen, I can tell you that. That's good to know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you're watching us for the first time, we definitely want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you're listening out there on iTunes or Google Play, Spotify, all of those places, i got to let you all know we are on high-definition video on YouTube as well. So if you want to see what these guys look like, tune into YouTube. Um, just don't look at me. I'm, I have a face made for radio. So that's why we... Uh, we we started this as audio only, and then somebody said, you know, Boston be a good idea to do live video. And I was like, have you seen me? <laughs> but, so, we're on video. Congratulations. Um, just got on Spotify. Really excited about that. Uh, it took us two years. So thank you to Spotify for finally adding us to Spotify. That opens us up to millions of uh, listeners out there, so that's really exciting. Um, and really, honestly, for a lot of our, our guests, uh, a lot of our guests aren't even on Spotify with their own music. So this is a good opportunity for people that are on our show to actually be on Spotify. So hit the, the like, follow button, whatever it's called on Spotify. Follow our channel on there as well. That'll help us out a lot. Um, we are located on all social media except for Pinterest. Actually, we are on Pinterest as well. We don't have a Snapchat, though, because we're over 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> or over 15? Is it 18? How old do you have to be to not have a Snapchat anymore, Lawson? I think you can be as young as 10. Yeah, but, you know, like, you don't want to be, like, 52 with a Snapchat, you know? The top limit. Oh, the top? Yeah, what's yeah. the top limit? 34? I uh, know. I don't think there's a limit, man. My grandma has one. <laughs> Your grandma has a Snapchat. Yeah. She'll comment on my stories. I forget about that, and I'll post something like... <laughs> raunchy. Yeah, something at a party or something, and she'll go, Oh my God, I thought you were an angel. Jesus is watching. Jesus is... What would Jesus do? Jesus Lawson? is watching Jesus. Lawson's Jesus Snapchat. would not take that shot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, there's a hashtag in there somewhere. Um, my post-production self will find the hashtag there. <laughs> oh, man. Grandma Snapchat. Awesome. 
So I'm uh, sometime today. I'm gonna start a Snapchat. Yeah, awesome. I'm inspired. And his grandma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at ETX Rocks. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Apparently, there's a little bell to the right of the subscribe button. Hit that bell, too. That'll notify you when we have new content up and ready for you guys to watch, uh, which is often. We have almost 1,500 videos on our YouTube channel. So if you're a music fan and you're not subscribed to ETX Rocks yet, what are you waiting for? Get that done. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. That actually lets us know when you like it. So that's why it's called the like button. <laughs> I would have loved to have been in that meeting. Like when they were trying to name the different buttons. What should we call this one? Like, you know, someone posts something and you really like it. <laughs> Let's call it the like button. <laughs> Love button. <laughs> I think that's a different thing. I think it is too. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. That's called off the rails, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there's a huge difference between the like button and the love button, I think. Don't hit the love button on this show, folks. Just the like button. <laughs> but there is a love button on Facebook now. Oh. Yeah, there is. Dumb. Did you ever hit the wrong button on there? Yes. Like Facebook, like someone's cat died or something. You, and you throw, hit the funny face. Or dies or crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do that all the time. How quick are you at like, undoing that? Because <laughs> I've gotten really quick at undoing it. <laughs> yeah. Not quick enough for some people, though. <laughs> You put but, LOL in there. Like, my yeah. mom. Lots of love. They thought it meant lots of love. I was telling my mom. Your aunt, your aunt died. <laughs> yeah. LOL. In the beginning when she first got an iPhone, I was telling her this really sad story. She sends me back all the laughing emojis. And I said, no, oh, why the hell? That's not funny at all. And she goes, those were crying faces. And I was like, no, that's laughing faces. Like, why are you laughing? This is like. I love the, the people that are like the high five emoji. And they put that out there for prayer. prayer. Like why is this? It's, it's like man, I just found out I have stage four cancer, and all you see is this. It's like, dude, why are you high five? And that's just rude. Oh, I thought I was praying. No, you're not. I mean, take the time. Just write, I'm praying for you. I don't know. Yeah, I can't. I can't complain because I didn't know that was a high five until like a month ago, and then I felt really bad. Yeah, <laughs> I still I high five know a lot that too. <laughs> <laughs> See, so we are very educational here on the ETX Rock Show. You're welcome. Stop using the high five emoji to pray for people. We are also completely self funded on the ETX Rock Show, which means we are low budget, and I emphasize the word low. Um, so we have set up a donate link for you folks out there that would like to help support the show um, financially. And we'll take any size contribution, even like a nickel. I think we'll take a nickel. P producer, will we take a nickel? Yeah, the website will let us. So someone out there, try to send us a nickel so we can find out if the website will let us. Um, and the website you go to is www.paypal.me forward slash ETX rocks. Send us a nickel. Lawson, send us a nickel. I'll send you a nickel. All right, cool. Lawson's going to be the guinea pig on the nickel thing. And, and I'll let you know in the next episode if you can send us nickels or not. It's because of y'all's contributions out there that we just recently launched a brand new webpage in March. You can go to that webpage at etxrocks.show. You're going to find over 11,000 hours of live music content on there, including all of our live episodes, including Snake River Red, which comes out at the end of August. You'll see all of this stuff on there. So go check that out, and also we have internet. And we also have an internet radio playlist on there, where all three of the songs these guys played today will be on there very shortly. So y'all check that out. And as we always say on the ETX Rock Show, we want to thank you guys out there for always supporting live music of all genres and all styles. And don't ever forget ETX, ETX rocks. rocks. That's right.
From the unknown to the stars, from the couch to the car, from the unheralded and the unheard, to the legends and beyond, it's where we all belong, yes this is where it all starts. From every genre, from every plane, this is where the music's played, so tune right in, won't you bring? This is where it all begins. Welcome to the show. Let the music flow of every style and creed. And you can bet your socks that ETX rocks. ETX rocks. 